I've got a little bit of a present this year. Avid CNC sent me a laser that works with a CNC machine. It's a 15 watt diode type laser. And I need to unpack it and install it on the machine. So I looked through all the bits that showed up in the box. There's the laser and the attachment hardware and a new control box that needs to get hung on the CNC machine. The other thing that I needed to do was upgrade my CNC control box. So there were new cards for that. This is the laser itself. I don't need that just yet. <laughs> Lots of cabling for the new setup and unpacking all of the parts. So to be perfectly clear, I'm not getting paid by Avid CNC, but they did send me this laser free of charge. I think it's sort of on permanent loan. <laughs> it's not going to work with my existing dust collection. I can't have the two hoses on each side of the spindle. So I took the dust collection apart off of the CNC spindle. So I'd have space to put the new laser system in place. The laser itself rides on a system, sort of a track, I guess, that goes up and down. So it can be pulled out of the way when the spindle is being used, and it can be deployed when the laser is going to be used. So I have to put together that system that holds the laser to the Z axis of the CNC machine. And it's a plate attached to a linear bearing. And then that linear bearing holds the laser. And the pistons that move the laser up and down with compressed air. And Avid has fairly straightforward instructions for doing all of this. I won't go into too much detail on exactly how to do it. This part of the build was straightforward. Once I have the track and all the plates and parts put together, I can attach the laser. It's a little tricky in that there's a bunch of tiny screws that hold the laser in place, which wasn't hard, it was just a little tricky. I found a block of wood to put the system on so I could sort of hold it where it needed to be to put the screws in place. I put the air valves onto the top of the pistons. The one thing that I kind of screwed up, this little, I guess, valve or T connector for the air system, I put on the wrong side of the plate. It was supposed to go on the back, not on the front. <laughs> it looks like it would work on the front, but I think it works a little better on the back where it's supposed to go. And I didn't notice this until I had it mostly together but it wasn't too hard to move. And it seems to work. And I can hook up the power for the laser. I had to run the air hoses and the power for the laser through the tracks on the CNC. I didn't, I didn't actually film that part, but it was easy. It's just a matter of kind of threading it through the cable tracks all the way back to the control boxes that they go into. And there was enough cable. That was something I was a little bit worried about because you don't really know until you start to lay it out. <laughs> but it was fine in the end. Now the more challenging part of this project was upgrading my CNC control box. I have a machine from the early days of this design from Avid. Back then it was CNC router parts. So I had to do a bunch of updating in my control box, which meant pulling out a bunch of cards, then installing some new cards with all of the wires and cables going to the right places. <laughs> the first big new card that I had to put in sits on two large posts that attach to the orange backing of the control box. I needed to drill two new holes into that orange plate. And those holes needed to be in just the right location so the card would sit in just the right location. 
So my idea at this point was to make a template out of wood with the holes in the correct location, then use that template to drill the holes into the orange aluminum plate of the control box. But in the end, the holes really weren't as precise as I was hoping. <laughs> Only one of the posts was I able to kind of push into the right location so I could get the, the screw to attach to the card through the post. I think in looking at it and thinking about it now, what might have worked better, and someone can maybe offer better suggestions, would be to have attached the posts to the card, plugged the card into where it goes, and marked where the posts touch the orange backing, maybe with some wet paint or something. So I'd get a realistic location of where the holes needed to go. I had to get a metric M6 threaded tap so I could thread this hole to take the post. And I needed to get a long handled driver to be able to get this down to the, the orange plate in and around all of the parts. <laughs> but it worked and the posts went in just fine. They just ended up not quite in the most precise location, so only one of them was really able to be functional. <laughs> you can see how large these posts are. So you can see now how this card plugs in and has to fall on the right location on those posts. And I put in a new set of Proximity sensor switches. I think that's what these are. One thing that was a little bit complicated with this is because my box was so old, I was having to follow two different sets of instructions. Because of that, they overlapped a little bit. I had to add two new holes to the box for two new places to plug in the cables for the laser. The first hole was a little rough. This probably isn't the best way of doing this, <laughs> but these are the tools I had. The second hole I used a smaller drill bit at first and then a slightly larger drill bit and then finally the final half inch drill bit. And this worked a little bit better going from a small hole to a bigger hole. Then once I had the holes, I could label them auxiliary three and auxiliary four, <laughs> part of the instructions. Then I could wire in the new plug that goes into that. And really the roughness of the hole doesn't matter too much as it gets mostly covered. Then I can wire up where those attach to the different cards and put the whole plate on the side of the box back on. Then I needed to hang the box on the CNC machine. Now where Avid wants you to put the box is underneath on the inside of the frame. And I have the inside of my frame all filled with wood. So I couldn't really put it there. I mean, I could have, it just would have been difficult. So I decided to hang it on the outside behind the other two boxes. And I didn't have a cross piece there, so I put a piece of plywood along the frame. Then I could hang the box on that piece of plywood. And that worked just fine. And the cables were long enough to reach all the way around to that box. Then I can put the dust collection back together. I'm gonna cut this in half. So instead of having the two hoses coming down, I'll just have one hose. I've been wanting to try this as the, the two hose system works okay, but I don't know if it really sucks enough. So I've been wanting to try a one hose system anyway, so this was a good chance to do that. I've already modified these fixtures once. I'm just continuing that process. <laughs> the top piece I had to 
cut the clamp part in half and then the plate that attaches to the z-axis needed a little notch cut out of it. And I can put that back together again. And the screws should go in the same place. I'm trying to figure out which way it went. I had to detach the cable for the spindle to get this back in place. I put the nuts and the bolts into the wooden plate, and then I think in the end I put the nuts into the 8020 and threaded the bolts through the wood into the 8020. That worked better. I don't think I could slide the whole piece onto the end of the 8020. So I had to kind of find the bolts through the wooden piece. But with some patience, it worked okay. And I can take the clamp off and clamp the upper section. I'm thinking at some point, if I redo this, that this flexible piece would work better if it was a solid tube. I think the airflow would be a little better. And now that I just have the one, that would be easier to set up. So I just need to find a four inch pipe. But for now, this is what I have, so I'm using the flexible tube. And that's how the dust collection looks now. I wanted to try cutting a few things with a laser, of course. One thing I've always been interested in is cutting out a flat thing and then folding it into a three-dimensional object. Blender has a way that you can export a mesh as a flat shape with the uh, cut edges and the fold lines all set up. So I made a simple 20-sided object and I could unwrap that and then cut that out and see if I could fold it back into the object. I cut up a cereal box to get some material. <laughs> and I had to do some testing to figure out what power percentages on the laser and what feed speeds to move the laser at to make it either cut or make a line that I can fold around. It's not like there's a, a set of instructions of what settings to put things at to cut different materials. You kind of have to figure that out. But after some testing, I was able to cut out my shape. It worked pretty well. And I used hot glue and glued the piece back together again and it actually worked pretty well. This is about the simplest thing you can do with the laser cutter. <laughs> then I wanted to make an object where I have something drawn on the surface. I thought of making a globe. I can map the lines from the globe in Blender onto the dodecahedron and the unfolding export will bring those lines along as a bitmap. So I can use Aspire to trace those lines out of the bitmap and get vectors that I can use to have the laser move around and draw those lines. <laughs> so I drew the lines first on the piece of chipboard. Then I can draw the fold lines with the laser, which are a little bit deeper than the draw lines. Then I can do the cut lines last. And even though everything was set the same way, these didn't quite go all the way through. So I had to help them a little bit just to free the piece from the cardboard. And I can fold this up into an object. And it kind of looks like a globe. <laughs> So these really are things that you could do with any laser cutter. There really isn't anything about these that uses the CNC as part of the process. So I wanted to try and make a bigger version of this. So I found an old cardboard box and I took one of the sides that was a little bigger than my cereal box piece. <laughs> and I could try to hold that piece down. It wasn't quite flat. So I was trying to force it into place. I'd like to remake my vacuum table at some point. I had one a long time ago, but it never really worked very well. I'd like to make a newer version of that. I think that would work for this kind of stuff. So I can draw the map of the world onto the cardboard with the laser. I've set up the offsets for the laser so I can use the spindle in the same location. 
I put my drag knife into the spindle and that allowed me to cut the fold lines first, then cut out the shape with the drag knife. And this worked pretty well. I was pulling the cardboard up a little bit and I was trying to help it stay down with a shim. <laughs> so I wouldn't get my hand too close to that moving razor blade. And it worked pretty well with the offset. It knows sort of where the laser is and where the spindle is. So I can do a project with both. It needed just a little bit of help getting the piece out of the cardboard. And I decided that tabs don't really work with the thicker corrugated cardboard. So I cut off all of the tabs and I put the piece together. and that worked pretty well. I'm gonna to have to experiment more with this, figuring out what I can actually cut with it. I think drawing onto carved surfaces would be really interesting as well. Thanks for watching.